So, um, Sadhguru, what about um, when people say that we were created by God? See, obviously you did not create yourself, that's for sure. Our ideas of God may vary from culture to culture, different people around the world have different ideas about it, different beliefs about it. But why we came to this idea is this, we all crawled out of our mother's wombs and you see a newborn child, how he's looking? He's asking, who, what, what the hell is all this? So much creation. Do you see question marks in his eyes? <laughs> what, 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 what? So much. Who do did all this? Obviously, first he looks at his mother. Well, the mother delivered you, but she can't deliver the planet. Then you look at your father. Well, obviously he can't do all this. Then you looked at every other adult around you. Nobody seems to be capable of doing all this. Then being human beings, we say, there is a big human being sitting up there. He does all this. I'm sorry ladies, he's a man <laughs> Because we are human, we are thinking a big human is up there. But it's a fact that we did not create this, isn't it? Neither this nor this, we did not create this, we meddled with it. We meddled with it, we muddled with it, but we did not create it, for sure. So, we need an explanation. This is a choice you have. Do you need an explanation or are you willing to explore? If you explore, you will come to one kind of situation within yourself. If you come to agreement with some explanation that somebody gives you, the only choice is either to believe it or disbelieve it. If you believe it, you will become confident. It'll not bring any clarity, it'll… You, it'll bring you confidence. If you disbelieve it, you will be confused. If you're joyfully confused, it's very wonderful. But most people don't know how to handle their confusion joyfully. When they get confused, they make themselves miserable. But the most wonderful thing in human intelligence is to recognize what you do not know as you do not know. Everything that you do not know, you believe, this is a serious problem. We have done terrible things to each other simply because I believe this, you believe that. Continuing to do it even now, isn't it, across the world. Because I believe one thing and you believe something else. Now, if I let you live, my belief will suffer. <laughs> the best thing is you're dead. <laughs> yes, <laughs> because you believe something else is the truth and I believe something else is the truth, now both of us can't live in one place. We can pretend for some time. When it comes to real issues, we can't be in one place. Why is it it's so difficult? If you really have a working intelligence, you must be able to see what I do not know as I do not know, isn't it? Is it not very human and very wonderful to see what I do not know, I do not know, what's the big deal about it? If you see I do not know, I do not know is an immense possibility. Only when you see I do not know, the possibility of knowing becomes a reality. If you see I do not know, the longing to know, the seeking to know and the possibility of knowing becomes a living reality. Everything that you do not know, you believe. You have to be only among your kind. If you are with another kind of people, either they should not exist or you should not exist, that's all it'll lead to. So this is something that we have to come to because human intelligence is at its best when it does not know. If I just think I know, I will become stupid because I have my conclusions about everything. If I see I do not know, intelligence is full on, isn't it? You want to keep your intelligence in a working mode or a off mode? You saving it for another place? No, I want to know because it looks like that. A lot of people are saving it for elsewhere. No, you need it here. 
if you need it here, please look at this and see. If when you see I do not know, you become very conscious, very aware, very alert, is it true? When you think, I know, you do the dumbest and idiotic things, very gross things, yes or no? Yes. If you really see, I do not know, you have fight with nobody. You have no fight with anybody, isn't it? Yes. I know is always a fight. <laughs> so in the yogic culture, there is a phenomena. I am calling this a phenomena because today, this evening you may not understand what I am saying, but if you invest some time and energy, you will understand. We identify with our ignorance, never with our knowledge, because it doesn't matter how much you know, if you read the libraries on the planet, still what you know is a minuscule in this existence, isn't it? Yes. Hello? Yes. But your ignorance is boundless, yes or no? So, if you are identified with your ignorance, you will be borderless, boundless human being. If you are identified with your knowledge, you will become a constipated human being. <laughs> constipated means it happens little by little. <laughs> this is how life is happening right now. Little by little it is happening. It is not happening in a beautiful way. It is little by little. We have to strive to find one moment of joy somewhere. We have to do so many things to experience one moment of ecstasy. If you want to just live here, drenched with nameless ecstasy is going on in every cell in your body, every moment of your life, then you must identify with your ignorance. You must come to terms with your ignorance. If you come to terms with your ignorance and pay enough attention, if you're ignorant, you naturally pay attention, isn't it? If you pay enough attention, you will see with all this scientific knowledge that we have, we still do not know one atom in its entirety. We know how to use them, we know how to break them, we know how to fuse them, we know how to make them explode, but we don't know what the hell it is even today. Yes or no? So if you pay enough attention, you clearly realize you don't know a thing. Well, he asked that question, this is all I did. When I was just four, four and a half years of age, I suddenly realized I don't know a thing. So if somebody gave me a glass of water, I'm just looking at the water because I do not know what is water. Well, I know how to use the water, but I don't know what it is. Even today you don't know what it is. If I find a leaf, I'm staring at it for four, five hours. If I sit up in my bed, I'm just staring at the darkness for the entire night. My dear father, being a physician, he started thinking, I have a… I'm… Uh, <coughs> I need psychiatric evaluation. <laughs> so this boy is simply staring at something all the time. My problem is I look at this, I still don't know this, so I'm not able to shift my attention to anything else. If I look at this, I'm just looking at this because I've still not figured this out. So if you pay enough attention, this universe opens its doors only to those who pay enough attention. Whichever door has been opened for you in your life has opened because you paid attention to that dimension of life. Yes or no? Yes. That's the only way it works. Now, if your attention is such, it is not seeking anything, but it's simply attentive. It pays attention to everything. It does not decide an elephant is more important than an ant. It just pays attention to everything because this is the nature of creation. If you look at an ant, have you paid enough attention to an ant ever? I… P I spent a lot of time with them. <laughs> Believe me, it's one of the finest machines on the planet. Yes or no? Yes. If you had a car like this, you know, you could do all the California deserts effortlessly. <laughs> it's such a fine machine, it's not a simple thing. If you pay enough attention to the ant, you will realize whatever created this ant, it did not pay any less attention to the ant than it paid to you. Yes or no? Then who the hell are you to decide who should get more attention and less attention? It is just that you have to sharpen your ability to pay attention, not to any particular thing, to simply pay attention. If you pay enough attention, 
Is it true this body, though you gave food from outside, this body was created from inside? Yes? yes. So whatever is the source of creation must be fun functioning from within you, isn't it? Yes. Is it? Yes. So when you don't know what is the nature of the source of creation, you may use in English language, in India we have many words. <laughs> in, in, in this part of the world, you may call it God. It's just your explanation for the source of creation, isn't it? Because you have no explanation for the creation, you saying, God made this. We have thousand names for that, <laughs> all right? But fundamentally, we are trying to explain the source of creation. Is it true in your experience, the source of this life's creation is functioning from within you? If it's functioning from within you, if it's somewhere up there and you missed it, it's okay. If it's happening from within you and you missed it, isn't it a tragedy? Hello? Yes. If the source of creation is throbbing within you and you did not notice it, are you not a tragedy? Yes. So my entire life and work is to just avoid the tragedy for people. Thank you. Thank you very much.